Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I'm Angelia and today I have a very exciting video. I have a mystery bag of books. Let me explain what this is. So for the longest time, I have been so intrigued by things like book uh, subscriptions and especially curated book boxes and book bags. So I call this an unboxing in my community post. It's really more like an unbagging, but unboxing is a more um, recognizable term. But anyway, I'm, I'm just always been very curious about that when bookstores, especially independent bookstores, have like a little questionnaire and you send them money and they send you book surprises. And I love to watch those unboxings when other booktubers do them, but I've never had the courage to go ahead and try it. I've always just been afraid that maybe the, the questionnaire wouldn't sufficiently let them know you know, how to make a good choice and they just kind of wouldn't get me or they would send me things I already read or I already had them because I can't possibly tell them, well, you have to watch uh, two years worth of videos and, and come down and look through all my cart and my shelves and you have to read all my journals to see everything I checked out of the library. So I just, I was just nervous. I didn't want to do it. So then I hit upon the idea of commissioning one of my close, uh, you know, family members who know exactly what I like and what I read and they have an inside track on what I actually have. My daughter, Emma, who you have seen on the channel if you've been around a while, here's her picture of the lovely Emma. And she took up the challenge and she took it one step further because I was, I was just commissioning this challenge. I was going to buy the books, but she surprised me and she did it for Mother's Day. And it's a little bit late because of all of the family commotion we've had going on between my mother-in-law's um, accident and then we just went on a trip to get her transition to memory care and Emma was graduating and all these things were going on. So we're actually, we've been celebrating Mother's and Father's Day kind of in between the two days when we could all be together. So you don't need to know all these, all these complicated family dynamics. You just need to know we're about to have a lot of fun. There are three books. This was my challenge. I said, I want somebody to go and pick me out. Three books that I have not read that will be a surprise that you think I will like. And and I want to, I want to see, you know, it's not that I am in need of more books. In fact, I'm probably in need of stop buying books for a little while, but I just, I want the surprise. I want to see what somebody would select for me. And I also have, so I have going in my favor that she knows me well. We talk about books a lot. She loves to shop in bookstores. She is an excellent gift giver. She, she always nails it. In fact, this, this t-shirt is a gift from another Mother's Day that she gave me. She also was able to text Stephen while she was shopping to double check. You know, I kind of get nervous about the blurbs on books giving too much away. So when I get them out, if it's something I, I don't know anything about that I've never heard of, I might look at that just very lightly, but I also I put my Chromebook over here and I opened it up to a Kirkus review so we can see a, maybe a review that will not spoil things if we need a little more information about the book. So uh, I'm going to stop blathering about all these things and actually pull them out. So I have it right here. It's in this lovely gift bag with this sparkly paper that I'm definitely going to do the mom thing and carefully fold and save the bag and the paper. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull them out without looking. So you might actually see the books before I do, because I'm going to try to like close my eyes and pull them out one at a time. We're going to see what it is and read a little bit about it. Maybe we'll read the first a um, little bit, like the first few sentences or something to get the feel. I don't usually do that with book hauls, but since there's just three and I have no clue what these are and didn't pick them out, uh, maybe we, we want to get a little feel of the style. Okay, can you tell? I'm like so excited. Okay, let's see what let's see what's in here. All right, here we go. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna pull the paper aside and just not look over here. And okay, I'm pulling something out. It feels kind of, it doesn't feel real thick. Let's see what it is. Okay, I'm going to close my eyes. I'll get it out of the box. Okay, what is it? Whoops. Oh, 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 look what it is. Clear by Karis Davies. Why did I, okay, I don't know what this book's about, but somebody, okay, here's, here's all I know. I have noticed in the past couple weeks 
you know, when you're, when you're watching a booktube video and then like somebody's weekly wrap up and then in the comments people tell what, what their favorite book of the week is and I have heard multiple people say they were reading this and loving it and, and I and I and I and I thought wait what is that book um ah! okay let's see what it is clear by Car is Karis or Carrie Stavies author of West and the Mission House okay look at this beautiful cover all right there's can you see this there's like a tea a teapot floating in a whirlpool kind of looks like in the waves okay there's a blurb at the top from Hernan Diaz a poignant, profound depiction of both solitude and connection, a masterful, discreetly sublime book. Look at it, it's kind of thin. Oh, it might be, it might be one of those good little gems. Let's see. Okay. A singular crystalline novel about a life-changing account encounter between two men on a remote island. Near the end of the Scottish clearances in which communities of the rural poor were driven from their homes by landowners, an impoverished minister takes a job evicting a farmer despite his own misgivings and his wife's disapproval. Ooh, okay, so Scotland? Is the author Scottish? John travels to a remote island where he is tasked with expelling the last remaining resident. Ooh, oh, sounds good. A man named Ivar, who has been living there alone, or maybe it's Ivor, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll figure out the Scottish pronunciation. Um, who's been living there alone for decades? Shortly after he arrives. All right, I, okay, I don't want to find out what happens after he arrives. I'm going to stop there. Let's look up the Carcass Review because, uh, let, wait, let's check the author too. The author is Welsh and now lives in Scotland. Ooh, okay. Yes, okay. The island, the two people... Okay, there was an interruption, an amber alert came on, and I, in my attempt to look at it and clear it, I I stopped the camera, so now I'm I'm starting over. Well, I'm not starting over, I'm just starting the segment back up. Okay, so I pulled up the Kirkus review, it has a starred review, and I'm just going to read the last lines. When I'm not sure or I'm short on time, I just drop to the last sentence of Kirkus reviews to find out if it's, if it's wonderful or not. And it says, a deft and graceful yarn about language, love, and rebellion against the inhumane forces of history. Okay, I love everything about this selection so far. I love that I've already heard great things about it, that I really don't know anything about it. I love that it is, um, it's like, it's good to have a nice uh, short thing on hand sometimes. Uh, the cover is absolutely beautiful. I like this, this setup of the time period, the location the two people and they're going to develop some kind of bond or friendship. I know whatever he went there to do is not going to be what happens exactly. So I am all here for it and it has a nice feel. Okay. So the young one has knocked it out of the park with book one. If this was it, I would be totally happy, but this is, there's still two more. Oh my gosh. So yay. Let's see what the next one is. Okay. The next one's feeling heavy and sick. Okay, close my eyes. I don't know. Ah! I don't know. I'm dropping things. I don't know if I'm holding this upside down or right side up. Oh, oh, Real Americans by Rachel Kong. Okay, this is also very pretty. Oh, look. Oh, sprayed edges. And what city are we looking at on the front? I'm not sure. Okay, it's pretty. I love the colors. Even the back is pretty. Do I know anything about this book? No, but author of Goodbye Vitamin, I have heard of that book. I've never read it, but I, I, I've heard of it. I've, I've heard of it in a, in a positive light, but I've never read it. Rachel Kong, I've never read anything by this author. Okay, two for two, girl. I have not read this book, and I actually don't know anything about this book. This is a complete, like, I don't know what this is. So you got me, you got me good. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Wait, circle back, circle back. I got thrown off by that Amber Alert. I was going to read like the opening sentence of the other, of Clear. So let's see. Let's just go back. He wished he could swim. The swimming belt felt like a flimsy thing and it had been no comfort to be told not to worry. The men couldn't swim either. Each time they rose, 
He glimpsed the rocky shore, the cliffs, the absence of any kind of landing. Each time they descended, the rocks vanished and repla were replaced by a liquid wall of gray. He closed his eyes. Thump! Dear God. Okay, so it starts with a, a rocky boat ride, a terrifying boat ride. I am there for that. That sounds, that just sounds so good. Okay, let's find out what real American is and why does this book weigh a million pounds? This, the sprayed edges, can you see how pretty that is? I think they're like lotus flowers. All right, from the award-winning author of Goodbye Vitamin, and it, wait, let's not slump, an exhilarating novel of American identity that spans three generations. Hold the show, intergenerational family saga, yes. In one family and asks what makes us who we are and how inevitable are, are our futures. Real Americans begins in New York City, ding, love it, on the precipice of Y2K where 22-year-old Lily Chen, an unpaid intern at a slick media company, meets Matthew. Matthew is everything she is not, poised, confident, and most notably heir to a vast pharmaceutical fortune. Lily, the only child of scientists who fled Mao's cultural revolution, was raised in Tampa and is flat broke. Despite their differences, Lily and Matthew fall in love. In 2021, yes, time changes, yes, 15-year-old Nick Chen feels like an outsider on the isolated Washington Island where he lives with his single mother, Lily. He can't shake the sense she is hiding something. When Nick sets out to find his biological father, the quest threatens to raise more questions than it provides answers. Oh, yes, the, the family mysteries, the family drama, the two time periods. I love, I love stuff like that, and she knows it well. Okay, we have... Um, we have blurbs back here from Ha Jin, C. Pam Zhang, Brett Bennett, Ruman Alam, Raven Leilani, and Andrew Sean Greer, uh, all-star lineup of blurbers. And let's, uh, let's read the little beginning piece and then we'll see what Kirkus has to say. Okay, I'm so excited about this. It's the whole, the multicultural generational family Thing. I just I love stories like this. Okay, the beginning says Beijing 1966. She isn't afraid, but he is. They stand in the darkness before a glass case of old things. A Ming Dynasty inkstone, a chrysanthemum card from Horn, a song painting stamped with ruby red collector seals, and on a silk pillow, so slight it could be missed, an ancient lotus seed with a legend behind it. Mmm, I like the descriptive vibe. I don't know. My descriptive vibe isn't working very well. But this this just sounds really good. It sounds like a good, um, just a lot of substance. Let's take a look at Kirkus. Okay, Kirkus loves it. Kirkus star, bold, thoughtful, and delicate at once, addressing life's biggest questions through artfully crafted scenes and characters. And if you have watched more than one of my videos, you know I am a character-driven reader, which really sounds like both of these books so far are character novels, which I love. A sweeping exploration of choice, chance, class, race, and genetic engineering, oh, interesting, in three generations of a Chinese-American family. All right, yes, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm just gonna have to pitch all of my TBRs that are already running out the window because these sound so good. I'm so intrigued. Why did I close this? I'm still gonna need it for the third book. Okay, let's see. There should be one more book in this bag. Okay, I'm gonna, ooh, it's another, feels pretty big. Feels kind of thick. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out without looking. What is it? Oops, upside down. Oh. Scary. So you you not some like it darker. You like it darker. Stephen King. This is his new collection. I am aware of this. I, I knew that it was coming out, but that's all I know. He Stephen King is an excellent storyteller, and I do love a good Stephen King. We all know he can he can kind of hit and miss, but you know what's a funny thing is is the hit and miss depends on who you ask. Like what everybody has a different 
a different favorite sort of lane of Stephen King I've noticed. And some of the ones that I like the best are not the favorites of other people. Some people are really into the very classic horror strain. Some people like his um, ones that are more kind of in the speculative fiction realm. Uh, some people prefer the short fiction. Some people like the super long ones. So I find I find the hearing about people talking about Stephen King is almost as interesting as actually reading it myself. But when I saw that he was doing a new collection of short stories, I was definitely, I was definitely intrigued. And I love the title. You like it darker. I do like a little bit of horror. I don't like really gory, over the top, crazy wheels off horror, but well-crafted horror from a good storyteller. I am down for that. I'm really interested in this. And, oh, and you do know I love short stories and she knows this too. Okay, it says, from legendary storyteller and master of short fiction, Stephen King, comes an extraordinary new collection of 12 short stories, many never published and some of his best ever. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about this. This is gonna be really fun. I can start reading these since they're short stories. I can uh, in intersperse them among with other things that I'm reading, and I can also uh, bring it back in strong for Shorty September. I think the last Stephen King book I read was Fairy Tale, which um, I loved the first half of it, and then the second half, when it, the part that was actually the fairy tale wasn't it, it kind of had like a like a lull in the middle and the, but then the beginning and the ending were really good and then um i also one that i read in the past few years that i really loved was the institute which a lot of hardcore stephen king fans didn't really like that one but i i was really into that one so that's kind of my recent stephen king but okay i'm so excited about this it's creepy i like the font of the word stories and thank you once again Emma, this is this is good. I'm th these are all yes. There's nothing here. I haven't not read any of these. I don't know very much about these. I had heard of two of the three of them, but I have not read a word. I haven't even picked any of these up in a bookstore or seen them to think about them. So you you totally you totally nailed it. Okay, let's look at the little opening part of the first story. The first story is called. Two Talented Bastids, B-A-S-T-I-D-S. My father, my famous father, died in 2023 at the age of 90. Two years before he passed, he got an email from a freelance writer named Ruth Crawford asking him for an interview. I read it to him as I did all his personal and business correspondence because by then he'd given up his electronic devices. First, his desktop computer, then his laptop, and finally his beloved phone. His eyesight, his eyesight stayed good right up until the end, but he said that looking at the iPhone's screen gave him a headache. At the reception following the funeral, Doc Goodwin told me that Pop might have suffered a series of mini strokes leading up to the big one. I like Stephen King's short fiction. It, it's, he, he really tightens it up with the structure that sometimes kind of rambles on in the really long books. So we have a nice um, assortment here. We have historical fiction, we have a short book, we have a sprawling saga. Maybe it doesn't sprawl, but it's, you know, multiple <laughs> multiple decades. And then we have short stories. So this is a really well-balanced little gift. Let's just look at the review of Some Like It Darker. You like it darker. I keep, I keep giving it the wrong name. Oop. We have another star, Kirkus star on our hands here. The disturbing stories in King's latest collection will seep into your psyche and haunt you. Oh good, that's just, just what I was looking for. <laughs> I have my psyche haunted. Let's see, a dozen tales from the master of creepiness. Do you like your short stories on the dark side? Enjoy having eerie images and unsettling plot points turn your dreams into nightmares Take pleasure in jumping at shadows and feeling your heart beat faster after nightfall. If so, this beefy new collection is for you. So I this is this is a great roundup. We, we have horror, historical fiction, and I think that the the real Americans is probably kind of a blend of historical and contemporary. So I am thrilled. Emma, I know you're gonna watch this video. Thank you. I love you. You nailed it. I gave you life, 
and you did not give me a lanyard. You gave me three excellent books that I am super excited to read. And I hope that everyone else has something great to read this afternoon. Let me know if you've read any of these books in this video or if you plan to and what you are thinking about reading. And I will be back on Friday for Friday Reads. See you then. Bye-bye.